I will call the case of Hazel Merritt versus Martin O'Neill. This matter is before the court. And the plaintiff's motion regarding defendant and father's parenting time. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Present is attorney Alex Goldman representing the plaintiff mother, Hazel Merritt. Is Miss Merritt present? Oh, there's Miss Merritt. Uh, is Martin O'Neill present on audio? Yep. Good morning, Mr. O'Neill. The court would note for the record that this court did enter an ex parte order on November 27th, 2023, which uh, reserved or spent the defendant father's printing time based upon allegations uh, that the seven year old child of the parties was being assaulted by children uh, of Mr. O'Neill's from another relationship. In any event, the parties have appeared this morning, have conferred with Mr. Walker for the front of the court. Mr. Walker has provided the following recommendation. The recommendation is that the expert order of November 27th, 2023, which suspended dad's credit time, shall continue pending the results of an active CPS investigation and SANE investigation. Um, it's further recommended that the parties uh, appear back before his court for review on January 31st, 2024 at 9 a.m. Um, that's a recommendation. Uh, Mr. Goldman, is law enforcement involved? Not to my knowledge. I would defer to Hazel on that. Nope. Miss Merritt, do you know if law enforcement has gotten involved with this? Yes, they have been involved. You're right. What, uh, oh Michigan State God. Police, Monroe County Sheriff's Department? It's the Monroe County Detectives Bureau is involved. <laughs> okay. Monroe County Sheriff's Office. All right, Mr. Gomez, is this recommendation agreeable with your client? Presumably it is, correct? That's correct, Your Honor. We agree. Okay. Um, what about some uh, FaceTime? No. No, I mean, I'm not doing none of that because none of this is true. None, right. of, none of this is true, man. None of okay. this is true. She is a liar. Look your client up, man. Look your client up. She's been lying to detectives and all. Look your client up. This Mr. is not true. Mr. Your Honor, I attempted to get some type of to to get time through this over a child. She violated her. And Mr. O'Neill did not want to do that. Mr. O'Neill, we're going to mute you because I cannot hear anyone else when you are yelling at the court. So we're going to mute you, and we will unmute you when we have a chance to talk. Obviously, you are opposed to recognition. Mr. Walker? Your Honor, I... Uh, in the breakout room, I did attempt to facilitate some type of interim parenting time. Uh, Mr. Goman was uh, was would would have uh, was was okay with that and would have allowed some type of parenting time. Mr. O'Neill refused to uh, to talk about parenting time. In terms of supervised parenting time, it, Mr. Goman, it, it, supervised it, or unsupervised, either one was both were brought up. Uh, and Mr. O'Neill refused to discuss parenting time. Okay. Um, obviously, other than the allegations of Mr. Goldman, we have no documentation. Do you have some reports? I've done everything I can to procure those, Your Honor. I did submit a uh, request for records um, using U of M's HIPAA authorized form. I sent that to them. I let them know about the urgent nature of this request to get it expedited, and I haven't gotten that back. I've left a voicemail for the CPS worker. She hasn't returned it. I, I think the results of that SANE exam from U of M are gonna be the most uh, probative information for the court. And I, I believe I've done all I can to request it. Of course, I was done on November 25th and, uh, and the court has no documentation. So I've got his um, you know, mother's allegations. That's correct, Your Honor. And um, I, again, I'm doing everything I can to get information that will confirm or deny that we aren't trying to deny all of mr o'neill's parenting time uh we we are willing to allow some unsupervised parenting time as long as it's not in that home i just think that while we're waiting for the outcome of these dispositive investigations that it's prudent to proceed with caution okay well the um mr walker the court would like a, a recommendation regarding a parity time for dad in the interim and again there's other than allegations the, the court uh does not want to simply deny dad plenty of time. And if Mr. O'Neill chooses not to exercise that, then so be it. Um, uh, okay, um, we'll unmute Mr. O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill, the court has a question for you. The court wants to reinstate your parenting time. 
Mr. O'Neill, can you hear the court? Yes, I can. Okay, the court wants to reinstate your parenting time. These are allegations. If the court agrees, there's no, the court is not satisfied that there's proof of these allegations. But so if the court wants to order some parenting time, we'll come back in January, hopefully with some documentation. If not, we're going to throw all this, all this out. But in the meantime, we have the holidays coming up. I want you to have parenting time with your daughter. We just Can want to I? make sure that it's a good, hold on just a minute, please. Let me finish. We want it to be in a safe environment. So um, the, the allegations, the home in which you reside, do the, the does your 13 year old and the 20 year old reside in the same home he's 22 years old he hasn't been here ever since he graduated out of high school she don't even know what she's talking about she thinks she know what every she thinks she mr. know what goes on in my house and she and she mr. don't mr o'neill and mr. the lawyer report and the mr. cps O'Neil. report does not yeah. match up mr o'neill we listen to the court do those children live in the same house that you live in no, they don't. My 13 okay. year old so son, though. We're going to talk about some parenting time, Mr. O'Neill, which the, the children are not there. So it's just you and, uh, and your Man, daughter. I'm not, no, 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 because all these allegations are lies. If you put a lie detector under her, it's going to ring off. I'm Mr. not, O'Neil, man, I'm not bagging down for nothing. Mr. I'm not. Do you want to see your daughter over the holidays? I want her inside my house. I don't want to be going to McDonald's or to no library or none of that. That's fine. We haven't, okay. nobody did anything to Elijah here. Mr. O'Neill, will you stop arguing with the court? I'm just trying to get through this. I'm so not arguing you, with the court. It's like y'all biased against me and him. Home, and, uh, y'all got O'Neil, all type of reports. Which other children should not be present? Then no. No. You, man, y'all. No. Mr. Walker, what was your, your, your suggestion to Mr. O'Neill that the children not be present or there be a supervisor? Man, his uh, paperwork do not even match up with the CPS paperwork. Mute, we're going to mute Mr. O'Neill once again. Mr. O'Neill, you are being disruptive and you will not, uh, if you will not listen to anyone. Mr. Walker, uh, what's your recommendation in terms of parenting time over the holidays? Your that Honor, the supervisor that the, the, these children, Mr. O'Neill's a 13 year old, I don't know what their names are, but it's alleged a 13 year old. Um, allegedly assaulted the child with a knife. I don't know why police were not called at that time. So the court has a hard time believing these allegations, Mr. Goldman. If the police were not called when the, this 13-year-old son of Mr. Goldman allegedly assaulted the daughter with a knife, really? Police were not called? Okay, then there's the other allegation. The 20-year-old has sexually assaulted the child. Um, again, Mr. Walker, what's your, uh, what, what, what do you find to recommend? Your Honor, I was able, unable to even talk about a possible recommendation uh, with, with Mr. O'Neill because he would constantly in, interrupt me and I was not able to get a word out edgewise. Um, however, I would make, make, make a recommendation that he get to at least spend some time either Christmas Day or Christmas Eve for a few hours without anybody else in the house. All right. Uh... Prior to this court's expert, I Mr. O'Neill's parenting time, if the court recalls, was uh, week on, week off. Is that correct, Mr. Goldman? I apologize, Your Honor. Can you repeat that? The, the current order of this court was week on, week off parenting time. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. The police are involved in this. There's no documentation that this court has, uh, um, Ms. Merritt. These are simply allegations. Um, I contacted the police. When, hang on a second. My baby's crying. No, Kiki. Sorry. Okay. We're going to let your attorney talk then, Ms. Merritt. We're going to mute you because we cannot hear when you got a child. Uh, you're in court right now and we've got a child crying right now. We cannot uh, conduct this. All right. The... Uh, Here's what the court's going to do, Mr. Neal. The court's going to reinstate your parenting time, provided that, that the um, uh, Martin. Your Honor, the police are involved. I have a police report number Hazel. and everything. Hazel. Okay. And the court's going to reinstate Mr. O'Neill's parenting time with the understanding that Mr. O'Neill's children. Will not be present. Mr. O'Neill's children from a prior, another relationship are not present. Okay, we'll unmute Mr. O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill, do you understand the recommendation? 
Mr. O'Neill? Here I come. You want nope, to know what the, I don't court, what the hold, just stop and one no. minute, listen to the court. Yeah, the court is wanting to reinstate your, your parenting time week on, week off, provided that your son Martin, your daughter Alexa, and your daughter Carrie are not present. No, nope. can you can you uh, can you uh comply with that such an order? No, I can't because they love their sister, they have not did anything to their sister wrong, nothing right. at all. All this stuff is all lies and it's just okay. lies. Right. Trying to make it work, Mr. 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 O'Neill. Yes, All sir. right, so the, what the court can do is the court will continue to expire order. We're going to set this for a review sometime later this month. Mr. Okay. Goldman, you need to come back with documentation. Um, we're going to... Can I say something else? Please, just one more thing. On, hold on just a minute, or Mr. O'Neill. Can you put it on December 20th, the 21st? The 20th, sir, at 245. Okay, we're going to put this over to December 20th. Ex parte order will continue. We'll put this over to December 20th at 2.45 p.m. And uh, Mr. Goldman, the court's going to want documentation. You need to have a, a detective here that's investigating the case. Speak to that person. or We need some uh, some documentation. We need proof of these allegations. Understood, Your Honor. So Mr. O'Neill, the court's going to adjourn this matter for uh, uh, one week. We're going to put this on our docket December 20th at 2.45 so we can get the bottom of this. Right, Mr. Sir, O'Neill, you, have, you want say, to say something else? Yes, can I please? Because I have to get this out. I have got his report, the lawyer report, and I have got the CPS report. They don't even match. It don't even match. It says that she was cut. It was. It said that she was cut with a knife or whatever. Why the police wasn't called? And then, and then the nineteenth was the last time that I seen the leisure. Why did it take her all the way to the twenty fifth to take a leisure to the emergency room? And then where is the nurse report? This man sent me all these type of reports, but except the nurse report, he didn't send me the nurse report and his paperwork do not match us up with the CPS paperwork. Right. Mr. O'Neill provided copy of those reports to the court and to Mr. Goldman. I sure will. So you deliver them up to the court up here and then the court will have reviewed those and uh, we will uh, discuss this matter further on December 20th. At two forty-five, and I and I feel like I feel like my daughter is being malicious. At that's what I feel like, and I feel like that I need some type of address or something where she stays so I can send CPS to her house, like she did mine. Tick for tack. It's not fair. It's not fair that y'all put the car here and he haven't been in the home ever since he graduated out of high school in two thousand and twenty. That don't even make sense. And she's never alone with the kids. Never. All right, Mr. O'Neill. And that's provide court order. Reports. Mr. O'Neill, provide copies of reports to the court and to Mr. Goldman. Make a note because we'll get a notice out today, but uh, it's, it's pretty quick uh, to continue it. So we're going to review this matter December 20th at 2.45 via Zoom. And Mr. O'Neill, you may want to talk to Trey because you are shooting yourself in the foot because you, when you don't listen to the parties, uh, you are working against yourself. I'm letting you know that right now. They lying on my family, but I can't protect my family. All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Walker will advise the recommendation. Uh, that's thought. what we'll continue until December 20th at 245. And hold on, Mr. Neal. we got one other matter we're going to deal with this morning, which is an alleged PPO violation. Mr. Goldman, are you involved in that? It's a show I'm, cause initiated no, by Honor, Hazel my, Merritt. My limited scope representation only covers the ex parte and related hearings. All right. Okay. Uh, well, Ms. Merritt, do you stand, stand on the polycom? And uh, Mr. O'Neill, you're still there, correct? Yeah. So, you're, all right, you're all on right Mr. Excuse. Goldman, thank you. You can, you can zoom out, Mr. Goldman. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. The court will call the other case before the, on the court's docket. This morning, Hazel Merritt versus Martin O'Neill, which. Uh, Hazel Merritt filed a motion for her to show cause alleging that Martin O'Neill violated personal protection order uh, of this court. Uh, both parties are uh, present via Zoom. Ms. Merritt, you've alleged that you're in the referee room when Mr. Merritt said you are a liar with your stankin' ass. He told me that I falsified our daughter's Doctor's notes, just like the order that was signed on November 27, 2023, is fake. 
That's your allegation? Yes. That's your allegation, is that correct? That is correct. And what? And how does that uh, uh, violate the personal protection order entered by his court? Because you placed it that he's not allowed to confront me in public. He's not allowed to say anything to me. And when he's addressing me and calling me names, that's violating the PPO. He seems to think it's okay to constantly call me names, constantly lie on me. The lie. Wow. All right. Obviously, Mr. O'Neill, it's childish. It's childish. I mean, come on. You're you're a parent. You're gonna childish. You lying on my names? family. And I never called her stink, and I said it's stink in here. That's what I said. No. And the ref can not spoil that. No. The, uh, the, the court. The court does not find this allegation to violate the personal protection order. Miss Merritt, it prohibits uh, Mr. O'Neill from assaulting you, threatening you with physical harm or violence, interfering with your employment, um, following you, like confronting like, you in a public place. Yes, if he comes up that. to a minor store, is in your face. That's one thing. But during the Friendly Court referee hearing, he makes inappropriate comments. The court does not find this to be in violation of the personal protection order. The court will accordingly dismiss the, uh, the violation. All right, that will conclude this matter. We'll see you both the next Wednesday, December 20th at 2.45 p.m. on Fairly Time. Yep, and I had that paperwork for you. You said, well, Your Honor, I apologize. My computer cut out. The court defines the allegation does not violate the personal protection order. The court is only dismissing the show cause. I'm just asking that Mr. O'Neill act as an adult in the future. All right, that will conclude the matter. You can both see you next uh, week, December 20th at 2.45 in Fairly Time issue. Okay. On record. Yeah. Court will call the case of Hazel Merritt versus Martin O'Neill. Um, good afternoon, Mr. O'Neill. Yes. All right. So for the record, Mr. O'Neill is before the court, an order of this court, or in that he personally appeared today uh, as to why he should not be held contempt for his use of foul and inappropriate language directed to the court back in December 20, 2023. Um, Mr. Dr Mr. Neil, I'm of course trying to work with you. I was offended personally, professionally, when you started using foul language directed to the court. I'm just trying to get through this. And if you you'd make much more progress if you just relax rather than shouting and using foul language to the court. You have much more credibility with this court. We're trying to get to the bottom of this so we can reestablish relationship with your children. That's all I want to do for you. Yes. So what do you have to say for your inappropriate foul language? Well, I would like to say that I apologize to the court and to you. I'm going to be very sorry. I didn't mean that. Right. Apologies like yourself. So I wanted to hear, Mr. O'Neill. And I just want us to be constructive in the future. Let's, let's get going back to the same thing. I just wanted to hear that we, we can be on the same page and talk civilly. Now, I don't know if you dropped this by. Uh, I see in the court file, it's a uh, notice to the friendly court from uh, Protective Services. And they said there's no, no preponderance, no evidence of any. Uh, these allegations that the, uh, the no substantiation of the claims of abuse and neglect that was made by Miss Merritt. And I know you're trying to tell me that, but we're just trying to get some documentation verifying that. that I have an obligation to protect the children. So we have a, a, a court date coming up on uh, February 13th. Um, and that, of course, when we were last in court, I was told the CPS investigation was still open. This report, was in, uh, this day, the investigation was completed January 12th. And that was just the last Friday. I wish I could move it up, but again, it's already already scheduled. February thirteenth. Uh, perhaps we can. Uh, you can always ask at that time about some makeup here at the time. Yeah. Yes. I Unreasonable. Am. But again, if we can have a civil conversation, I know you're up. You're frustrated. You're upset with uh, Miss Merritt. But again, uh, don't direct to the court. I mean, I will hear you better and give you more credibility if you'll uh, engage conversation. Same with the friend of the court. I think you were you're. You were so frustrated, you'd really, the front of the court had a hard time communicating with you. Uh, so I, I will assure you, you uh, uh, get much better results if you're sort of relaxed. And I understand your frustration uh, without question. Uh, we just want you to reestablish relationship with your daughter. And the court's recollection, uh, I'm trying to think what the parent time was. And I know this goes back some time. And yeah, we were back in December. That's when the court was informed that they were in a CPS investigation. And again, unless, has there been any, have you had contact with law enforcement? 
No, I haven't. The only thing that um that like really like bothers me a lot, and the reason why that I had got upset because she still have not been in school at all. Okay, here what you do is go to the school. You're the, the parent, your father, you can get the records. So I bring, have them right here in my Okay, phone. okay. What, what I suggest is uh, you have a friend of the court to take it down. You have a friend of the court caseworker, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know who that is. I would take a copy down to the front of the court. Make sure they've got a copy of that. And again, um, leave a, uh, my secretary court court to make a copy of that so we got in the okay. court file. And you make sure, I mean, why should not school, did, did they say? I have no idea, and it's kind of hard to to send a um, well-being check to her house, you know, because I don't have no information or or anything. And also, um, when the next time that I come back to court, um, the the principal from Arborwood, she would like to be subpoenaed to court to let you know how many days and everything well, uh, and what's going on with Alasia. Get a letter from her. What I would suggest, actually, rather than make a copy of what you have now, get an updated letter, like the, the first week of February. Get an updated letter from, from her saying these are the, the, the school record. It's a business record. She doesn't need to appear and testify. Okay. It's a business record. Have her do so much work to the station saying these are the dates that she has missed um, this year. That okay. that's critical. This court's not going to permit uh, a parent to miss all the school. She haven't been. It's like the only time when she go to school is when we have court, and like I didn't need to like scream out like that. I was screaming out for help, basically, and it's just like I screamed out the wrong way. But it's just it's been a roller coaster, and I would like Alicia to be in right. school every single day. She had week on week off, right? Mm -hmm. And where's the lady going to school? Who lives in Dundee? You or Miss Nara? She's in Dundee. Okay, so she was driving all the way from, from Dundee. She should be. Yeah. She, she she had no right to change the school. So I don't know if it is possible she could have enrolled her in Dundee schools. I, I don't even know if she's alive to be a, I mean, I haven't heard anything by, by um, ever since that I won the case the first time. As where as she lost her parents in time and she's supposed to only be getting her from Saturday of uh, 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 Friday and Saturday. And then like the next week, this is when all the uh, all the allegations had started and then she put the uh, ex forte and everything. But um yeah, it should be a letter from the detective up there too, because he's supposed to have been sending the letter. And you know, it's just all false and like really no one's getting hurt but a lady. Absolutely. You know Absolutely. What I'm saying? And I'm you know, I apologize for screaming out for help like that, but you know, this is getting really ridiculous because like she haven't been in school. She didn't even go to school today. Well, the school's off yesterday because of cold weather, but I know school's back in session today, but uh, that would be help, helpful. Get a letter from the school. I'd, I'd say get something more uh, updated. Okay. Um, the week before you come to court, maybe the first week of April, uh, I'm sorry, of February, mm -hmm. get a letter from the school saying these are the number of days she has missed and she's not coming to school. That that, that uh, uh, means a lot. And I do have something here from DSS um, to the front of the court. It's a confidential notice, but it does say, I don't know, I can't give you copies, I don't think. Uh, Maybe in front of the court cabinet, it just says that the case has been closed. Um, yeah, they said I can go to uh, DHS and get the okay, report. yeah, get a copy of that. So it looks like they've they've closed their case, yeah. So, unless uh, law enforcement is uh, doing some investigation, but they would have interviewed you or contacted you if there was some issue. Anyway, the court appreciates you appearing. Thank you, Mr. Dill. Thank you for uh, appearing. You're a totally different person today than you were when uh, we we're back on. December 20th. So I, I, I am I so sorry. I'm very like okay. passionate about my kids and them going to school. Absolutely. And I watched you earlier because I watch your live all the time. I need a lie. You know, your live, how you be doing it in court or whatever. And I, I might seen you ask like two or three people, you know, how was the kids doing it good in school or, you know, they need to go how to school. They doing in school. No and, question. And she, Alicia, is way behind. She might have to actually repeat the second grade. 
And so I'm just...